want to add a few more thoughts to this concept that uh, is developing for me about witness. One of these things is that witness, I said witness is like sex and air. It only matters when you're not getting any. A more accurate analogy would be that witness is like sympathy. Everyone wants to receive it. No one wants to give it. Um, another thing. On a fMRI brain scan, functional MRI. One person is suffering and the other person is witnessing the person who is suffering and they both have the same spots light up in their brain on the fMRI indicating that the person who is witnessing the suffering is experiencing some of the same effects like when a wife is pregnant and her husband experiences sympathy pains or whatever. This is along those same lines. So when you're witnessing someone's hurt, you're experiencing it with them. And that's why there's a cost of witness. And that's at the very leading edge of my conceptual understanding of witness. So I'll get to that here in a moment. And I reconsidered on sending these plasma fired pieces of the Promethean Forest to my friends and family who I haven't heard from for a couple years because that would be raping their witness, forcing them to witness something they don't want to observe, which is okay. To establish boundaries, and some people don't like your boundaries and they're just gonna take it from you. They're gonna force you to witness this thing that you don't want to witness, that you choose not to. You can imagine a lot of different scenarios where you force someone to watch something that they would rather not, even to the point of taping their eyelids open so they have to watch. You know, involving family members and torture and other weird things that you can uh, imagine. Forcing someone to watch, forcing someone to see something they don't want to see is what I would be doing if I sent these people pieces of plasma-fired wood. They don't want to see and I don't want to force them to see. And I'll revisit this topic a little later when I'm talking about this new line of product that I'm going to be putting out of these plasma fired pieces, along with a little video. Anyway. A couple examples of where witness and testimony are apparent and the effects of them or the lack thereof are also apparent in all of our lives that we've seen in spoiled children where the parents don't have the electricity to tell their kid no, bear their witness, bear their testimony to their child and say no, this thing you're doing, this isn't working. The parent chooses the softer, easier way out, more convenient and practical here and now in this moment rather than on principles and allows the child to do what they're doing in a self-destructive behavior pattern that's developing and as a result the child suffers because their parent would not bear their testimony to their child about what their parent is able to see the child doing and where that's going to lead the consequences of those behaviors. And this can happen between spouses. Um, I don't wanna make it personal, but yeah, in my family, there's, there's obviously a lack of will to experience the consequences of telling the truth. So instead, people say nothing or something false. Either way, it's a lie. Skipping to another version of the same subject, sometimes people refuse to bear witness because then they feel obligated. Now that they've seen this and know this thing that they've witnessed, 
they will then be obligated to do something as a result of what they've seen. Imagine someone who witnessed a murder. They don't want to testify. There could be consequences to telling the truth. Like, the murderer will want to come after me. Or when your family member finds a microchip in their head along with their sister and everyone scurries into the background because if I know about this, then they'll want to come scoop me up because I know something that I'm not supposed to know. And this is where that whole thing comes in with the narrative, the official narrative. My stepdad knows that I'm seeing things in those videos that the general public isn't supposed to see and that if I speak the truth, the consequences will be Biden's goon squad will come scoop us up. <laughs> so for the same reason a person doesn't want to bear witness or give their testimony because they witnessed a murder is very similar to the way my family members did not want to discuss anything about this microchip because the consequences of the men in black interfering with their life and you haven't heard me talk much about that microchip it's been a couple of years but that seems like a pretty big deal it would be hard to just brush into the background is a side issue, but you don't hear me talk about it much anymore. There's a lyric in that song, Live Like You Were Dying. I finally gave forgiveness. I'd been denying and I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying and we're all going to get the chance to live like we're dying. The Dark Night of the Soul. I'm going to include a link in the description from a kind of cheesy seemingly cheesy until the Israeli space defense minister came out and said no the Galactic Federation's real up until that point Galactic Federation was something that lost someone credibility in the mind of the viewer because now you're just talking woo woo nonsense but now it's not woo woo nonsense anymore and we're in that transition period right now where the public went from woo-woo nonsense to Rrr! wait a minute, the Israeli Space Defense Minister just said that? And he said Trump's down with it? And Trump hasn't responded? We're all going through the processing of that information right now. And you can be a pillar of support in the life of those around you by bearing witness, not giving solutions and advice, not even supportive words and uplifting BS because people see right through that shit. All you have to do is watch while they go through their transition and having someone there to see it helps them go through it. And in the link in the description that I said I'm going to include, it's talking about the transit, the light forces, right? I mean, it's like way out there, light forces and the Pleiadians and the Nefurians and all the rest is included in this channel. But what they say in this video that I'm going to include the link in the description is that through the transition they distinguish between those who have already woke and those who are about to go through inevitably this is the words it puts it in that they will inevitably experience the dark night of the soul and it's talking about the general population who hasn't yet gone through that process like James True said most people don't make it through this unless they get the rug jerked out from under them why because you can't jerk the rug out from under yourself. <laughs> Give it a try sometime and record it and put it on YouTube. That ought to be some classic YouTubery. You can't pull the rug out from under yourself. So we're all having the rug pulled out from under us. And that dark night of the soul is what shatters your self image and worldview and allows you to rebuild anew the death of the phoenix and the rebirth. So I'm going to finish up now with the whole witness concept and then trail off onto some other random thoughts. But this is going to be an ongoing conversation as this concept develops and matures. For me, I think it'll be a good conversation piece. Able to be applied to future scenarios as they happen. But the spoiled child can happen just like if a husband doesn't tell his wife what she needs to hear, the truth, and instead lets her continue in a pattern of self-destructive behavior. 
and defends it as if it's acceptable and normal and healthy and just fine, and she's gonna experience the consequence of his inability to tell her no, to tell her something that she doesn't wanna hear. And if instead, like a spoiled child, you just tell them what they wanna hear, you're not giving them an accurate reflection of themselves in order that they can see themselves. When you bear your testimony in that way, by telling someone they don't want someone something they don't want to hear, but it's the truth and the truth hurts, that's part of the cost of witness. The other part of the cost is the feeling of obligation that I've described. And a peculiar thing on my channel is that the plasma fired wood videos get the least amount of views. You can just scroll right down the homepage and see 25 views on this one, this plasma fire video, and on either side of it is me bloviating for a half hour, and that gets 250 views. Maybe the people have already seen enough plasma wood, like it, when you've seen one, you've seen them all. Or maybe it's a truth that hurts and that's difficult to bear, and the cost of witness is too high. So people don't want to witness that. Because you cannot learn something without having it affect your behavior in some way. And they don't want to be obligated to allow that new thing that they know about to affect their behavior. And instead, they'd rather just not know about it. And so there's a cost of witness there, and I think it can be seen in the view count on my plasma fired wood videos. Because those are hard evidence. Maybe a little too hard. And evidence of a transition and a change that's a little too much all at once. And that's what we're in the middle of, is a controlled demolition of our paradigm. Collectively, our self-images and worldviews. And as those around you have their paradigm begin to crumble, as someone who's already been through this, and just recently, you can be of great assistance to them. The analogy I came up with a while back was the potter's wheel of paradigms is spinning in my mind. And like on a potter's wheel, where he's building a vase, you know the potter's wheel, and they, they build and mold a vase, clay vase, if you get a thin spot or a hole, the whole thing collapses. And the world around us is developing more and more thin spots and more and more holes. The paradigm of the worldview that people live in right now is turning to Swiss cheese right before our eyes. So they're gonna have to let go of their old worldview and that's a difficult thing to do. And it's gonna take a crisis that forces them through that dark night of the soul. This is a orchestrated, coordinated, very meticulously planned sequence of crises stacked on top of one another. But that's what it is. A controlled demolition of our self-image and worldview. And on that note, let's take that paradigm and for a spin. That was like a triple entendre. Because the three kings of Orion's belt, now that we see them rising vertically on one horizon and setting horizontally on the other, that is paradigm shifting. So, it's not too crazy to reconsider this idea that maybe Spaceship Earth has been moved. I remember in one of my videos, it was one where the clouds was dancing and I was filming the clouds dancing thing. It would be best or it would be an appropriate and useful concept to consider yourself already beamed up aboard the mothership and that they are changing the environment around us. It's like a holodeck, simulating the environment we once lived in and then changing things in it quickly enough that we can't just not notice and go through the motions of life pretending like we don't notice but not so quickly that it throws us into shock.
merge that with this concept of spaceship Earth having been moved. Like the particle accelerator, CERN, might actually be an ion thruster. What's the difference? I don't know. But I hear they use an ion thruster as a form of transportation, like an engine, like a rocket motor, for long-term space travel. Ion thruster. Particle accelerator. And if that is indeed what it is, that might explain why we're seeing the stars and the moon move in ways that we've never seen. Because it's actually us moving in ways that we never have. That is a concept worth taking into consideration. Considering what we can see above our head and the movement of the stars, either the Earth is pulling one of these, <laughs> or someone cranked up the ion thruster. Just thought I'd throw that out there, a little giblet for the gravy. So as for this new line of product that I'm gonna produce of these plasma-fired pieces of the Promethean Forest, I've got about, I don't know, 10 to 100 of them that I've got my eye on that I've seen as I pass back and forth going through Southern Utah. that are the perfect specimen to cut, clean, and lacquer. And I'm gonna take a video of them in the ground so that the person who receives the final product can see, here's the tree when it was in the ground, here's what it looks like after I've cleaned it and lacquered it, and you'll be able to see the same exact tree. For those who want to see, this will be a good material to allow them to see, not to put in someone's face and force them to see someone, something they don't want to. Because those people, will tell themselves, ah, I don't know how you did this. You did it with a blowtorch, or maybe you got your own electric generator and some sort of hot iron that you put in there. I don't know how you did this. But you're trying to tell me it's some sort of natural phenomenon, like, okay, maybe you found a tree that got hit by lightning. They're not gonna be ready, willing, and able to accept immediately. No, these are entire forests. Millions of trees struck by lightning. But to see it in the ground, in a picture, right next to the final product, will help people through that mental process of transitioning and softening up their paradigm. So, on these new trees, I'm gonna just like number them. Number one, number two, Laura Edgar gets number one, and a couple others, at least a couple others. But from there on out, they'll all be numbered. Number two, number three, number seven. That way, whoever gets number seven can also see it in the ground before it was pulled and processed. So that's my idea. I'm gonna mass produce these to the extent that I can. And I think I still have a friend left that'll help me lacquer them. He's got a paint booth. If not, I'll have to wait till the weather warms up a little bit and use my living room as a spray booth turn on the air conditioner at one end and open up the window on the other and spray away. But until then, I've got the saws and I'm gonna start collecting the pieces. I think my next trip will probably be a Southern Utah one. And I'm gonna start giving them away. Like as much as I can. <laughs> Share the wealth. All wealth is knowledge and all economic growth is learning. And we're going through an economic growth cycle right now. We're learning so much so fast it hurts. That's why it's a controlled demolition rather than just in a, a total demolishing of your worldview instantly and immediately. They're creating little holes around the edge from the moon to the stars to the plasma fire. They're showing us enough that a lot of people are releasing from their rigid point of view. Soft-minded people who take a hard-line stance on things they don't understand, they're not gonna come along. But those who might are being, giving the, being given all the opportunity in the world by people who are painstakingly going to uh, great lengths to bring these 
changes about in such a way that we will be able to cope with it. Well, you may say there's no such thing as COVID, but as for me and Fauci, we believe. Just a little doom break. I now forgot what the hell I was even gonna talk about. Um, hold that thought again. I remember on my way to Missouri the first time saying that during this process of the sifting of the wheat and the chaff, that people will submit themselves to which petri dish they appropriately belong in and declare themselves to be unworthy of the kingdom of heaven and that they need to redo earth school. They will deem themselves unworthy of the graduation ceremony. I didn't see this coming, but this is exactly that process. Those who have not developed a personally relevant and personally meaningful set of underlying priorities that determine their principles and principles that determine their standards of behavior are unable to rely on that now. God don't want a bunch of people that just recite pablum and do whatever you tell them because you told them to. And those kind of people who haven't developed their own sense of morality, ethics, truth, and instead they joined a group, a consortium, where we all believe this, that, and the other thing. We do this and we don't do that. It multiplies the validity of those things we do and divides the responsibility of those things we did. Because you're part of a group that believes these things and acts in unison. That's a way of abandoning yourself by joining the group. So when I said that it's going to be spectacular to see the extent to which people are going to put their evacuation on full display and demonstrate the depths to which they are willing to go in this evacuation, abandoning of your own self, your own thought processes, your own personally relevant and personally meaningful understanding of right and wrong, true and false, and instead just go along with Whatever the TV says happened, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it blow up. TV said so, I saw it. So in this process, people are, in fact, declaring themselves unworthy of thinking for themselves because they haven't done it enough throughout their life. Now's not the time to start, right? In the middle of this? Hell no. I'm gonna go with the keep on keeping on, you don't switch horses midstream, and now that we're at the point of this crescendo, I can't suddenly switch my strategy for success now and start thinking for myself when I have subscribed to a philosophy of this group or that group, how can I just establish my own personally relevant, meaningful identity, philosophy, cosmology? And that's why those people need the dark night of the soul. So they can cut their losses, quit investing in a failed strategy, and start over. Remember freedom fries and freedom toast and taping up our windows? It was the first toilet paper shortage, but it came in the form of duct tape and plastic. Right after 9-11, I think it was Dick Cheney, said something, and it triggered the sheeple to run out and buy plastic rolls of plastic and duct tape and tape up their windows, because the biohazard weapon, whatever he said. Do you remember Freedom Fries and Freedom Toast, where we said, fuck the French, if they're not part of the coalition of the willing? Look at the words. Willing. Willing to what? Willing. We're the coalition of the willing, and if you're not willing, then... We're eating freedom fries instead of French fries, and freedom toast instead of French toast, 
and there was a lot of people out in the streets breaking very expensive bottles of wine to say, fuck you, French. That's the extent to which people have demonstrated the mindless self-preservation instinct that can be triggered that cause them to act. Now you apply freedom fries and freedom toast mentality to little green men I'm going to just have to review the video and show you some parts where I'll be one of the first witches burned at the stake for defending those green reptilian, dragon, serpent, uh, uh, cane bloodline, whatever they got to tell themselves, man. And it ain't much. All they have to tell themselves is everyone else is doing it. Everyone else agrees, I can't be held responsible for this. And if I don't do it, someone else will do it and they'll do it to me. So that's why I have to do this to you. That's their reasoning. Like 1984, where children turn in their parents for crime think. We're coming up on a event that will create a division that will cause the mindless sheeple to turn on their friends and their family in order to maintain their own good standing status as a member of the Church of Compliancocracy. Multiply freedom fries and freedom toast to an exponential biblical proportion and you watch these people demonstrate how much they've evacuated themselves and think that they're doing whatever mindless deed they're programmed to go do with the moral high ground because they're doing it for God and country and whatever other group think they bought into and they'll follow the rest of the lemmings right over the cliff I was driving through Vail today. Vail. You know who goes to Vail? It's not even the middle class. It's not even the upper, it's the upper, upper middle class. And driving into Vail, they got one of these giant digital billboards that says entering mask zone. I'm waiting for some of these upper middle class people to say, all right, jigs up. I thought we were in on this together. We were all in it together, remember? against the little people, but now you want me to wear a mask? Fuck you. I thought this was us against them. We're all in this together. I'm part of us. No, no, you're part of them. I saw a news report where the lady was saying, you know, we really need to give it up to the corporate America. They're taking the lead on this. They're ahead of the US government in implementing protocols and regulations and restrictions to slow the spread. They're way ahead of the government on this. We really need to give them a round of applause. You know what they call that when corporations begin to implement regulations and rules and restrictions? It's called fascism. That is the textbook definition of fascism. The merger of corporate and government powers. And you have the talking head on the TV saying that corporations have taken the lead and bestowed upon themselves all the power and authority of government to begin implementing rules and regulations and restrictions. Sounds like the corporations are governing. Textbook definition of fascism. That's what it's going to take. And they're going to keep incrementally ratcheting it up to get more and more people to crack until those who, at the end, despite, what, a year now of ridiculousness and they still can't see it? In two miles, take exit 157 for US 6 West, US 191 North, Fort Price, Salt Lake City. themselves unworthy of the truth. They have shown beyond any shadow of a doubt. They have no interest in the truth. At that point, it hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. The 
ringing of the division bell had begun. So the final separation will be swift. This incremental ratcheting up of the crisis, stacking one on top of another, trying to give that final straw that breaks the camel's back to quit trying to reinforce your failed strategy for success in life that's based on... In half a mile, take exit 157 for US 6 West, US 191 North toward Price, Salt Lake City. These crises are meant for the mental emotional transformation process to induce the dark night of the soul. Some people take exit 157. Emotionally numbed themselves to the point where they won't be able to develop the EQ, emotional intelligence quotient. They've spent 20 years not looking into the truth, so they don't have the IQ or the capacity. 20 years is a long time. James said today, had someone say, I'm still, I'm still sitting on the fence about the moon landing. You've had 50 years. The point of reconciliation has come. The truth about 9-11 will be revealed. And it was from that point that this transition and this transformation actually began. From that point forward, society itself started transforming, separating the wheat and the chaff into truthers and liars. People who have something else that's a higher priority than the truth. Convenient comfort, not being alienated and rejected by the group that they want to be a part of more than they want the truth. And with each successive instance where they had to buy into the official narrative rather than investing in their own thought processes and belief system, they abandoned themselves a little bit more and a little bit more to the point where they're about to show us exactly how far those people have abandoned themselves, what they're willing to do, and how easy it is to tell them something as ridiculous as you could possibly imagine, but you put the authority and credentials behind it. You stand behind the troops or stand in front of them. That was the mindset of war fever, and it's coming again. This time, only war.